I'm always throwing out all kinds of new things and pulling things out of my bags of tricks for you guys to try when it comes down to getting healthy. I don't know if you've heard of something known as black ginger. It's quite honestly like the black sheep of the ginger family. Like it's not used in traditional cooking. It's not the same kind of ginger that normal ginger is. So anyhow, I'm gonna break down some benefits of it because it's relatively new stuff. And there's just really cool evidence out there in the scientific community surrounding it and it's starting to get more accessible. So I'm gonna make this brief and make it simple. I'm gonna give you the benefits that I'm gonna talk about right here at the beginning of the video. But if you wanna stick with me, then I'll explain them all, explain how it works and everything like that. So black ginger is awesome for libido. It's awesome for mitochondrial biogenesis, which means energy. It's awesome for creating brown fat, which actually dissipates heat. And then it's also tremendous for exercise and pretty good for anti-aging. So I'm going to break all these down, but I want to be respectful of your time. So I do want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications every time I go live. Let's go break this down. First off, libido. How does black ginger affect libido? Well, this warrants a little bit of explanation. It all comes down to it being what is called a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Okay, a phosphodiesterase inhibitor is something that stops the mediation of phasodilation. Okay, so when we look at blood flow, which is important with libido, we have to pay attention to vasodilation. Vasodilation is when the blood vessels expand so more blood can get somewhere. Well, phosphodiesterase triggers the mediation of that. So when the body sees vasodilation improving, PD, uh, phosphodiesterase, ends up elevating to mediate that. Well, what's interesting is black ginger is a natural phosphodiesterase inhibitor, meaning it stops the shrinking of the blood vessels. So normally when they expand, they're forced to shrink. Well, it's stopping that, so you get more blood flow. And that means in this particular case, more blood flow to you know where, which is why black ginger is so powerful for libido. It really is interesting stuff when it comes to that. Okay, let's go ahead and let's talk about the next thing, which is mitochondrial biogenesis. This is where the science gets really interesting. And mitochondrial biogenesis is really just the ability to create more mitochondria and create more energy. So the Journal of Natural Medicines published a study. They found, really simply put, that it improved GLUT4 levels. Black ginger improves GLUT4, the expression of GLUT4. Now, when you look at a cell, a cell has GLUT4 that is inside of it. GLUT4 comes to the surface and absorbs glucose. If you don't have GLUT4 coming to the surface of a cell, then glucose isn't getting into the cell. So by improving that, we're improving how a cell uses energy. And when we improve how a cell uses energy, we create more energy, but we also develop the ability to process more, which means more mitochondrial density and more, let's say, power factories inside our cells. So the ability to handle more energy. So this alone is powerful stuff because if we have this happening, then we set the pace for the rest of our life. More mitochondria means more ability to create energy, not just today, but tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And of course we keep it up. Now one of my personal favorites is it increases levels of brown adipose tissue. At first, you hear adipose tissue, and that sounds terrible. It sounds like fat, but brown adipose tissue is good. Brown adipose tissue is the fat that dissipates heat. So the International Journal of Food Science has found that consuming black ginger increased the level of what are called brown adipose tissue adipocytes, so brown adipocytes, and actually made it so that white fat ended up going through lipolysis and brown fat ended up developing. Now brown fat is, it's, I, I say this all the time, but it's like one of those radiator heaters. You consume calories and those calories are shunted through the brown fat and the brown fat dissipates it just as heat. Now I don't know about you, but I would love to be able to consume calories and just have them burned as heat and not go to storage, right? So that's what brown fat is. So black ginger increases the levels of brown fat, but more importantly, increases the expression of what is called uncoupling protein one. Your science nerds out there know this, but let me break it down really simple. Uncoupling protein one is like the heating element. So if brown fat is the radiator, then the uncoupling protein is the heating element itself. So more uncoupling protein means more actual heating elements, more heat being dissipated. What that means to you? More of the calories that you're eating, just poof, turning into heat. Now the exercise piece of the equation is really cool too and all has to come circle back with energy and all that. I will mention really quick that you guys are always going to ask and I know it's going to end up in the comment sections where you can find black ginger. Uh, Yujito, which is the company that I usually talk about with matcha and everything like that, they just released this form of Thai black ginger. So I did put a link down below in the description. I'm not trying to push anything on you. I just know the question is going to come up where to get it, what brand and stuff like that. So why not make a mention? So check them out down in the description after you watch this video. 
Okay, so there was a study that was published in the journal Helion. It took a look at what are called polymethoxyflavones. Okay, and what these polymethoxyflavones are, they are a component of the black ginger, but it, they're a component that has a role specifically with ATP, specifically with energy production. So they found in this study uh, with mice, and a lot of these studies are done on mice because they're early, that when they gave mice this polymethoxyflavone for four weeks, they had tremendous, tremendous improvements in their overall endurance and stamina on an open swim test and their overall grip strength. Now, granted, this is how they measure strength of mice. They have them do a wire hang where they like hang on a wire. How long do they have a grip for before they fall? Sounds kind of weird and sounds kind of cruel, but it's actually painless and harm, harmless to the animals. But it's interesting to see that they had such an improvement. Now, from a biological standpoint, what was happening inside their body, they had an increase in mitochondria. So they had an increase in mitochondrial biogenesis. They were creating more, again, factories that could create energy at a faster rate. But in conjunction with that, they had a decrease in the expression of tumor necrosis factor alpha, which again, you science people know this, but I make it simple. TNF alpha is inflammation. So they had a decrease in inflammation in conjunction with an increase in energy production. So less inflammation, more energy means moving smoothly, flowing through life effortlessly, seamlessly with more energy. And last but not least, this is a big one for those of you that are over 40, they found that there's an elevation in what is called CERT1. So an expression of CERT1. Now CERT1 plays a role in the deacetylation of proteins. So basically it stops the deacetylation of proteins to some degree. What that really means, I know this is so complex and I'm, I'm sorry, but it's hard to like take some of these big words and make them simple. Basically what it means is it stops the fragmentation of different proteins that would cause like reactive oxygen species and stress inside your body. Proteins break down and they, they, they cause stress inside your body and toxic buildup essentially for lack of a better way of saying it. And if we can mitigate some of that, we don't age as fast. And this is one of the biggest things that we're finding, and usually in some test tube studies, but we're still finding it. So the evidence is starting to unfold that black ginger could be really powerful with this. Now, of course, with anything, you know, we have to wait and see all the evidence, but for something that's inexpensive, something that's simple, and something that has so many benefits, to me, it's somewhat of a no-brainer. I think we're gonna see a lot more evidence coming out in it. Anyhow, I'm here to bring new information and new products and new things to you. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you in the next video.